Hey everyone, one of the coaches of Unger Academy here. And today we're going to be looking at the performance of futures over time and the differences that we see today with e-marketplaces compared to the past when instead most of the contracts were traded in physical exchanges, in person, and in very different ways from how it is today. Before we begin, however, I invite you as always to leave us a like to this video, subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell to stay updated on the release of all our new videos. We thank you so much. Hi, we are the Unger Academy, and we teach traders how to make money in the markets. Our founder, Andrea Unger, had been struggling with trading for years until he developed his automated trading method, which he used to become the only four-time world trading champion. Subscribe to our channel for free tips and tricks. Okay, so let's start with a very brief overview of what the past was like. First of all, it was certainly very different from today. Uh, before 1998, the year in which we can date the advent of electronic future markets, 100% of these contracts were traded on so-called open outcry or in-person exchanges. And this was the case for quite some time. Indeed, it is believed that the very first trading, and we can see, you know, see an image here, took place in 1848. This image is taken from the headquarters of the CBOT, the uh, Chicago Board of Trade, in 1900. As you can see at the beginning, it wasn't such a crowded place, although it was just the early 20th century. The first futures to be traded were wheat and cattle. And these places, as mentioned before, were mainly visited by a few people. Who were they? Well, the producers of that commodity who had an interest in trading futures to protect themselves from any rise or depreciation in commodity prices. Then, over time, the first speculators or traders also started to appear. And I can also tell you that all the other futures, uh, metals, energy, stock indexes, the bonds and currencies, arrived later only in uh, 1981. And here we can see an image of the NYMEX, which is another in-person exchange of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange Group, but based in New York. And here is the crude oil pit. So in this case, we can see little amphitheaters inside the exchange with market makers in the center of this pit that were setting the price. And there were lots of traders around them who were instead trying to execute the orders, uh, or their orders, at the best price. And now how did they attempt to execute those orders? They used gestures. And you have to get into the perspective that these places were very populated. And since these were open trades, the tension was always very high. And as a result, all this resulted in so-called regulated chaos. Indeed, I'd like to say that there were very precise rules about how to place orders and what gestures to make to avoid misunderstandings that could amount to, well, let's say millions and millions of dollars. Today, perhaps a young trader uh, would have had a hard time believing his eyes seeing such images. As you can see, they wore very colorful, very flamboyant jackets, and this was because they needed to be distinguished from the various market makers, the brokers, and other people working inside the exchange to pass their orders and prevent mistakes. This image also shows some other gestures. The hands, as in this case, are held away from our body, indicating the intention to sell something. Instead, this other person is indicating the quantity, so in this case, a contract. Also, this gentleman here isn't making a victory sign, but putting his hand on top of his forehead it doesn't mean two contracts, but 20 contracts. Next, these orders were passed to the exchange or clearinghouse using these little slips of paper and afterwards were executed on the market. Gravitating around all these figures were the brokers, whose main task was to transmit orders from large hedge funds or banks to the market. Now, these places had very negative sides compared to markets nowadays. And just think of how, them, how many barriers to entry that existed. Not everyone could enter this market. There was a, a need for a particular dress code. Uh, brokers' transaction costs were very high, because at that time there weren't so many transactions yet, and as a result, brokers' margins were lower. Thus, these costs were then passed on to traders. And the style of trading was also profoundly different because clearly the traders were trying to, um, you know, as they say, follow the trend. If they had identified a great investor or the intentions of a great investor, well, you know, they would maybe try to go after him and do what he did. Anyway, today with e-markets, well, we certainly have more simplicity, lower fees, a much greater possibility to diversify, and also, certainly, less slippage and less transactional costs. After this brief introduction, let's just move to multicharts, where we created a workspace and loaded data going back to the 1970s. 
Of course, we have data from the 1970s only for live cattle, uh, wheat, some other commodities, and the futures that were already present in those years. Whereas the data for the S&P, uh, crude oil, gold, and so on, uh, are available only starting from 1980 or so. So what we did was uh, we applied a very simple strategy to these historical data. You can see it here. It is very simple. We're on daily bars, and we'll tell the system to buy at the previous high with stop orders and sell at the previous day's low, again with stop orders. This line is commented on and uh, colored green. If you want, you could also add a stop loss. In this case, being a trend-following strategy, I know that in one way or another, if my trend goes wrong, I'll probably reverse my position afterward. But for the time being, I'll just leave it commented. Now let's try this strategy and see how it would have worked on gold. And here are the results. Well, you can see that we're starting in the late 1970s. And uh, we can date the start of these instruments, as mentioned, around uh, 81. So on this date here. And you'll see that the very first, well, let's say, 10 to 13 years in the history of gold uh, were not trend-following at all. Which, on the other hand, from 96 onwards, the years when e-markets were starting to take hold, well, that's when trend-following strategies started to catch on. So here it does indeed seem that as a result of the arrival of e-markets uh, and more contracts traded electronically, Instead, then, uh, at the outcry, the nature of the market has changed profoundly. And it has remained so, or at least it would seem, to this day. Let's move on. Let's take a look at some commodities uh, that instead we'll see really have been very, very stable over time. Here the data even goes from 1974 till today. Here you see on coffee, uh, where we don't see a clear difference between before and after the introduction of e-markets. This commodity was trend-following and has remained so over time. And this is also a good thing because it means that we're basically working on a very strong tendency that has persisted for a very long time. After all, we're talking about nearly 50 years. Moving on, we also see wheat, which is very similar. As you can see also in this case, we're starting from 1970 and the trend-following strategy works pretty well. Although with some significant shocks, Look, please keep in mind that we didn't include any stop loss, take profit, or exit conditions in the strategy. It's just a very simple starter script. That just kind of helps us get an idea of how the market has changed over time. And so we see that wheat has certainly performed very, very well as well. Let's show you cotton, which is another commodity that has been very trend-following over time. Let's move on now with live cattle. Now, live cattle also is an amazing trend-following example. I mean, look, we're, we're also starting from 1970 and arriving in 2022. I mean, that's 52 years. Of course, there are some long phases, such as here from 88 to 92, 94, where there were no equity spikes. I mean, for six whole years. But what's certain is that anyway, in certain phases, these markets do respond well. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. As we know, this market is primarily mean reverting. We only have data from 97. Uh, when it started to become, uh, let's say, mainly electronic, or at least half of the contracts started to be traded through virtual exchanges, uh, or at least online. And we can see that there has been some consistency in the results, suggesting that strategies based on a reversal logic, which is the opposite of what we see here, could certainly work well. And we've actually seen it work since around the start of this e-marketplace. Let's go through another roundup of other futures. This is crude oil. Also, crude oil is very interesting and very trend-following since uh, 1983, uh, from when we have the data. Natural gas, another energy market, also really stunning. Again, we're starting from the 1990s, and we don't see any differences. In short, apart from what we've seen on gold, where we see and, and saw a very clear difference, here is a before and an after, we can say that with the advent of e-markets, these markets have continued to respond in much the same way. Of course, with alternating phases and moments, but they've certainly proven to be consistent over time. And this could be because in, in moments of euphoria or even panic, the human being who is behind all the decisions we make tends to make standard decisions, or at least decisions that return over time. Before we say goodbye, though, I'd like to leave you with a, a small piece of advice. If you're interested in learning more about how systematic trading works, in the description of this video, you'll find a link. Now, that link will take you to a page from where you can access a free presentation by Andrea Unger, 
our founder and the only four-time world trading champion. You'll also be able to order your free copy of our best-selling book, The Unger Method, uh, or even book a free call with a member of our team. If you like this video, please don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe to our channel and go and click on the bell to stay updated on the release of all our new videos. And with that, thank you so much for watching this video and uh, we'll see you soon in our next one. Bye-bye.